there have been a lot of takes on this Viking line as of, especially as of late, since, you know, they didn't do anything really, and Dozier is now at left, and, you know, they just moved Elf line over to right guard. But I, I think there's a chance they may have tipped their hand at something a little bit bigger than that when they were not really sure if they were going to keep Riley Reef or kind of put him on the chopping block. And for the two days that he was kind of in limbo because people were kind of like, why isn't he here that first day? And then it came out why, and they gave him an extra day to think it over. They did have Brian O'Neill at the left tackle spot. Meaning, there is a pretty decent chance they do view Brian O'Neill as their long-term left tackle. I have never been a fan of trying to move him over just because, to me, he's one of those players that, you know, he seems to be a better fit at right tackle. Even going back to his days at Pitt when he was playing some left tackle, he was a little bit more timid, his punch wasn't as good, and he just looks more comfortable overall at right tackle than he does left. So I'm not big into that, but who knows uh, if, you know, that. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about because I think we all knew there was a chance that O'Neal would be viewed as a more long-term left tackle option, something that became a lot more doubted right when they took Ezra Cleveland out of Boise State in the second round just a few months ago. So that's kind of what I want to talk about. They did not use Ezra Cleveland at all at left tackle, despite him being a second round draft pick this, well, yeah, second round rookie this season. And he was still at guard. He has yet to take a tackle snap in camp or in practice, to which of my knowledge, mostly at left guard. I think they tried him at right guard for a little bit, and then they moved him over to left. And... Keep in mind, he did play his entire career at Boise State at left tackle. So why would he just not be giving a single rep during that time? I I think it's because they may view the long term of this future on the left side as O'Neal and Ezra Cleveland. I think there's a chance of that. I think they view Ezra Cleveland as a long-term left guard. And that could potentially change. This is still very early. We could have one more offseason involved here that could really kind of kick the cans at this. But I do remember there were some rumblings of some Joe Tooney things and like early in the free agent period, right before they were about to tag him, there were some people like kind of like the Schefter kind of people, right? They were kind of coming out the woodworks like, don't be surprised if Minnesota's a dark horse for this one. And so they did you know, identify left guard as a problem point. And that does make sense. And they kind of just established, hey, Elf line wasn't good enough at left guard last year. So, and many thought they didn't try to address it at all. That includes myself. Now, I think they did address it, just not in the form we all thought it would. Well, would be. Because I think it's Ezra. I really do think it's Ezra. (laughs) And... To me, I think it's probably only a matter of time before we see Dakota Dozier benched for Ezra Cleveland, unless Dozier really takes off and runs with this, even though like I have gone back and I've looked at some of the stuff that he did last year in Green Bay, which was when he filled in for Elfline at left guard. um, There were some good things, there were some bad things. I think when we're talking about those outside zones and climbing to the second level, Every once in a while, you can kind of catch him slipping like, "Mm," because he doesn't really get to that linebacker spot. And then, you know, that doesn't really seal an edge for the running back to run through on the other side, which is a little unfortunate. But he did look okay and competent in pass protection when he wasn't completely overmatched by a guy like Zadarius Smith when they put him on the inside. And... Um, There were some general miscommunication things, I think, with him just being a backup thrown in there last year between both uh, Reef and Garrett Bradbury, and especially at the time, Garrett Bradbury was only in his second career game, so I would think communication with Dozier in there this time around is at least going to be better than that, but it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, 
they look at that that zone, the outside zones, is a pretty big staple of this offense. So they could be looking at that like and eventually say like, well, if Ezra's anywhere close to ready, we might try him there. So it wouldn't surprise me to see him benched just for the sake of he isn't as athletic as Ezra Cleveland. So I think that could happen, and I'm still not a big fan of Ezra at guard personally. I just don't like his punch that much, and I, I don't think he disrupts people enough. And in run blocking, I, I find it that he kind of likes to stand straight up as a six foot six guy, and that's a real nice way to lose leverage real fast. And yeah, I'd like to know your guys' comments down below opinions and stuff you know like and subscribe all the good stuff and until next time i bid y'all adieu